Hammered is a dungeon crawling drinking game that I'm designing. It'll be printed on coasters. I hope to get distributed in bars for people to screw around with while they drink. It's still in the early development stages and I don't have a lot of money to invest in it. So I'm drawing out the initial dungeon tiles by hand. Eventually I'll get large quantities of the cards printed properly on pulp board coasters. Before I get to that point though, I have to finish designing and playtesting the game which means drawing out hundreds of dungeon tiles by hand. I've got the process down to a science. It only takes me a couple of minutes to draw out a single tile. First, I use a stencil to draw the basic shape of the corridor. And there are five basic tile shapes that can be put together to create a huge variety of dungeons for people to play through. After I get the basic corridor shape drawn, I line the walls of the corridors with little stone blocks. Uh, even in the early playtesting stage, it's important to make the game visually interesting. It helps keep people engaged having something detailed to look at. And it gives a better idea of how the finished product will look. Filling the white space outside the corridors is important too. I envision the game being played by drunk people in dimly lit rooms, so I need to make the shape of each tile easily identifiable at a glance. There's a cross-hatching technique that's been popularized on a blog called Dyson Stodecahedron. I don't know where the technique originally came from, but it's used on a lot of pen and paper RPG maps. Basically, you randomly arrange sets of three short parallel lines to fill the blank space. When I started out drawing the tiles, I would draw out each line individually. But then I got the bright idea to take a razor blade and cut the end of a sharpie into thirds. I spread the little felt pieces apart a bit, and now I can draw a set of three lines a lot more quickly. It's a bit more sloppy than drawing the lines individually, but it's much, much faster. I imagine that these coaster tiles could also be used for people who are running their own campaigns as well. I'm designing them as part of a drinking game, but they'll be cheap to manufacture and hopefully readily available at many bars across the country. Uh, fingers crossed that they get that popular. Uh, just grab some coasters when you go out drinking and start a little collection. Then you can design a role-playing campaign using the coasters to reveal the map as you go. They're also just really fun to screw around with and just assemble together. I think it taps into the basic human desire to build shit. Uh, so even if you aren't playing a game of Hammered, you can have fun just messing around with the coasters to pass the time if you're otherwise bored. Uh, they also make a great conversation starter. If somebody sees you playing around with them, mention what you're doing, talk to them, start up a conversation. But the dungeon tiles are only one part of the game. On the other side of each coaster is a monster or an item or a trap. Uh, the general idea is that you go into the room and flip the coaster over to reveal its contents. And then you have to deal with whatever's in the room. If it's a monster, usually you have to take a couple drinks to defeat it. Uh, each card will have instructions printed on it telling you what you need to do. The whole game is pretty self-explanatory once you start messing around with it. I'll make another video at some point to talk about the other side of the cards. Right now I've got an artist drawing all the monster and item art, uh, Tom Waldrop. The guy is amazingly talented, but we don't have enough character designs finished yet to really show them off properly, so I'm holding off a bit before I reveal all that stuff. Another aspect of the game that I should mention is the treasure. The game starts off with a big pile of treasure on the table, and this represents the total treasure in the dungeon. When the treasure is gone, the game is over. Players count up their treasure and the one with the most wins, or the one who's drunkest wins, or the one who managed to seduce the succubus wins, or the one who recovered an artifact, or the guy who rescued the princess. You'll be drunk by that point, so you can argue over who got the best loot. 
that the point of any good drinking game is having fun while you're playing, not figuring out the winner. It's about the journey, not the destination. The treasure is really just there to facilitate gameplay. Plus, it's fun to run a huge pile of treasure through your fingers. You can use anything you want for the treasure. Poker chips, pennies, matchsticks, beats. It's all just a means to an end. In playtesting, I'm using bottle caps. When you're drinking a lot of beer, they tend to accumulate. And they clink through your fingers wonderfully. I'm actually considering looking into having special bottle caps printed up that I could sell as game accessories. Or maybe ship some bottle caps with a home version of the game. And I'm getting ahead of myself though. Right now, my focus is on getting the cards designed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me draw up a few of these little tiles. I'm really excited to get Hammered developed and out to the public. Once the basic design is finished, I'll be setting up a Kickstarter or some other kind of fundraiser to cover the practical costs of printing and packaging, so be on the lookout for that. I'll try to get some more development videos up as things progress. For now, I'm having a blast creating something fun, and I hope you enjoy playing it as much as I'm enjoying making it. Until next time, raise a glass and stay frosty, my friends. I look forward to getting you hammered soon.